Let's install a Ubuntu Server 20 using Volcha Cloud Compute Dallas Ubuntu 20 Server $5 a month. Let's deploy. It will take a while. Now it is up and running. So we click on our server for more details. This is our IP address. We connect as root. We say yes. Now the password. We copy the password. Now let's start uh, updating everything. With this command we update everything. Now we list what can be upgradable and we proceed to upgrade everything. Yeah. Once it's finished, let's reboot the system. As we can see, we have been disconnected because the server is going to restart. It has been turned off and now it's turning on. So let's give it some minutes. After some minutes, let's try again to access our server. Yes, we are in. Now let's clean our updates. And let's check our release. It's Ubuntu 20 LTS. Now let's secure the memory. We have to edit the fs tab file. So before doing that, let's back it up. And now let's go and edit it. At the end, we add these three lines. We save it, Ctrl O, Enter, Ctrl X. Now let's make some additional configurations. And let's see what we've done so far. Finally, reboot again, so the changes can be applied. Now let's install fail to bump is a package software that helps us to avoid brute force attacks. Let's create our own configuration file. And we are the following lines. In this case, we want to allow 11 retries. You can put it to three or four. But I just want to notice that even if we say don't allow the root user to enter our server, for each time we get a permission denied, it will count on it and it will ban our connection for, in this case, 70 seconds. The default is like one hour, so that's why I'm, I'm placing this. And um, for the purpose of, of this video, I'm adding up to uh, 12 uh, retries. Control O, X. We restart the service so that the changes are being applied. Since we are now satisfied with what we've done, we enable fail to ban to start whenever the server boots. Now let's create a new user so we can access with this one. So mine in this case is Elkavi. I'm going to add a password for Elkavi. I confirm the password. Now let's tell SSH service that we only want to access with that user. And before doing that, we back up our file configuration. We go to the bottom and we add the following. Allow users. Elkavi. You can add as many users as you want, for example user 2, user 3, and even you can specify from which specific IP address you want it to access to. And you can even place wildcards, right? So we save it, Ctrl O, Enter, Ctrl X. In other, now also we're going to create a admin group where, where Elkavi is going to belong, or your user in your case, and we confirm it with this configurations. Finally we restart. We restart the service. In another terminal let's try with our new user if we can get connected. Yes we can get connected with our new user. So let's try it and see if we have permissions of super user. Yes we do have super user permissions. Now back to our root user. Now let's tell SSH that we don't want the root user to be accessed remotely with SSH. For this, we need to search for this directive, permit root login, which is here. Control E to go to the end, and we say no. So now we are going to ban the root user to access our server remotely. In order to apply the, ser the changes, we restart the service. Now let's get disconnected as a root user password. It is denied. So we cancel that, Control C, because fail to ban is going to count those fail attempts to connect to our server and if we fail many times in this case 12 according to our configuration file it will be banning us it will say connection refused so we won't be able and 
to access our server in 60 minutes but in, in my case I guess I typed 70 seconds just for the sake of it for testing purposes now let's try access again with our user we are in we can become super user anyway so we type su and we type the root password and now we are root again so this is how we can use our server with uh, the root user first of all we connect with our new user and then we use super user command to access as our roots user now let's install the uncomplicated firewall it's already installed it is inactive because if we activate it now we would be blocked up, blocked to access so we need to add the ssh service so we can still access we check all the configuration you can uh, edit this ufw file but before doing that i recommend you to back it up and here you can edit everything you want once we are sure uh, of our configuration we can enable it and yes we confirm and check the status so port 22 refers to ssh service in order to exit the root user we place exit and now we are our new user in this case a copy so up to here our server is secured against uh, hackers and brute force attacks but it is also uh, recommended that we use an ssh key so we can add an, an extra layer security i will show you how so now we are at home in El Kobe. If we check out our files, we can see all of our files there. Another way to get there is CD home and go in and print in the, the current directory. So we display again what we got. In order to make it work, we got to create a new hidden directory, SSH. And now the, com the command to generate an SSH key is this one and we place uh, a password I recommend you that it is optional but I will place I will choose a password in my case and confirm it and the key is generated this is the key that should stay in the server and this is the key that should be in every device we are connecting to the server from this is the private one that we should use from our devices and this is the public one that should stay here in this server so that the system can check this private against this one public and check if we are allowed to connect to our server plus we got to specify what is the password that we set up for this ssh key it is like having installed here a lock and this is a, a physical key and we use a password on a keypad beep, beep, beep. for example imagine we are installing this lock in our house it's our physical key but our physical key also enters an electronic device that checks if this physical key enters the lock but also we need to to put it with a password that we got to touch with our hands with our finger in the button specifying one two three four and and that's it and if it's correct it, it it opens the door this is how it works so now we get disconnected from our server we print the directory where it is because we got to copy those keys to our computer this is the command to copy our files from a our server to our local computer so this is the command scp our user uh, copy at our ip address and where is located our key and now the path to our local computer in this case i have copied all my two ssh keys to my computer so now let's get connected again to our server And now let's proceed with the final installation of our SSH key. We go to our home directory and then to our SSH directory. We list our key and for SSH key we need to copy that public file to authorized keys file. There it is. Now let's set up the permissions. 
to our SSH directory. Now what we're going to do here is to set immutable our SSH directories so that nobody can change the permissions. We list the attributes and I stands for immutable so that means that nobody can change our permissions for this file. Now let's tell SSH service that we only want to access through SSH key. Password will not be enough and will be denied. So control W and we are searching for this line. Password authentication. Password authentication, yes. It, and we change it to no. Control O, save. And in order to apply the services, in order to apply the changes, we restart the system. We exit and we try to connect again. Now that SSH access is only allowed, we try without it and you can see permission denied. We didn't even have the chance to place our password. Since we are here inside in our directory in our local computer with our key, now we need to specify SSH that we are connecting with a key, with a key that is dash i and the location of our key. In this case, the private one followed by the username and the IP address. And now we specify the password for the key. And yes, we are now in our server. Now one last thing we need to do is to erase the private key from our server. Otherwise, it is not secure to be there. So we erase our keys. We exit and try again connecting. Yes, congratulations, now you have secured perfectly your Ubuntu server.